Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to St. Bernard Acres. And this is Friday. Extremely gloomy and rainy all day. It's like five o'clock in the afternoon or evening. And uh, like I said, rain today, it's gonna rain all day tomorrow, all day Sunday. But, it's bringing all the leaves down off the trees. <laughs> it's starting to look like winter out here almost. But uh, I wanted to bring some exciting news about the major upgrade for the off-grid cabin there. Uh, let me show you. It's been a long time, a lot of work. And before I forget it, I want to make sure I thank Bobby and I thank Gary for helping me out. And American Express for helping me out. <laughs> so, let me show you what's finally going on here. Alright, the off-grid cabin is now on the grid. There's my ground mount, or pad mount transformer. Not mine, but that's what they put in. And there's my meter that is working. Uh, just a quick reminder... That pole all the way down there on the left, 300 feet away, we had to trench all the way down to here, down to this point, and then trench again up to the meter base for them to set everything up. Had I gone with the poles, because it had to be the high voltage lines, they will not guarantee 200 amps over 125 feet from that transformer up there on that pole so I had to come 300 feet which means I had to bring the high voltage line down here and use another transformer uh, and had I wanted to do that with a couple of poles w there's a 20 foot section on each side that all these trees would have to come out and we did not want to take out all the trees. Some of them are dead and are going to come out, but a lot of them are not. And I sure did not want to cut all of our trees out. So this was a way to do it. This got the job done that we needed. Let me go up and give you a little bit closer look. With the transformer, and you can see what we trenched through and buried the line. This is my meter panel. You can see how little I've been using. Um, what I've done here to get power to the cabin, a lot of people were, I got all kinds of nasty emails. You can't do that. That's not going to work. What an idiot you are. <laughs> you know, all the usual ones. But let me show you what I did. I And I agree with the disclaimer. I am not an electrician. I have no codes to worry about. I just read up. I do it safely. That's what I've done. I have not run a supply line to the cabin. I have basically made a 135 foot extension cord. And what I did, if I can pull this cover off, I will show you. That's my 200 amp disconnect. That's the main disconnect for everything. Right here, I put in a 30 amp double pole breaker. I used a double pole because I didn't have a single pole here. But I will be replacing that when I run my conduit for this 10-2 wire. I've got to get the fittings to bring it up into this panel. I'm going to pull that double pole out of there and I'm going to use two single 
30 amp breakers because if I can get this back on one handed. <laughs> So, coming off that 30 amp breaker is 10-2 wire. This is the orange wire. This PVC is my supply line coming, my 200 amp service coming up. The 10-2 wire is going to be buried, but this is a temporary thing for right now. I've got it in conduit. Yeah, you can't put tinted wire in conduit, you can't put AWG in conduit, blah, 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 blah. I can do whatever I want because there are no codes. If you Google it, half will tell you you can't put it in conduit. Half will tell you you can put it in conduit. Everybody's got a different way of doing it. I'm going to bury it, you know, a foot underground. So I went ahead and did the conduit up to here. I have to get... Like I said, the fittings to go into the box. I have to get elbows, get the rest of this put on. That's why I have another piece sitting there. And if you follow this up, 130 feet or so, I'll show you how the cabin is connected. If you remember, I have a 30 amp RV receptacle on the back of the cabin. This is wired to my service panel and breakers inside the cabin. So I took that 10 2 wire from the meter down there and I put a 30 amp plug on it that's why I said this is basically a an extension cord because I have this I've been running the whole cabin off of 20 amps so I know 30 amp is plenty this is a 30 amp pigtail that I had in there with my solar comes off of this line and plugs into the cabin and this line is for my generator that I can plug into the cabin so that's my power room there I don't have the keys to open it but that's where all my solar equipment is that's where the generator is so if the electricity goes out I can come out here and plug in my solar or I can plug in my generator whatever I need the reason there's my solar panels that are going to be moving. This is my rain catchment. The reason I'm going on the grid, number one, I want the convenience of it. And you see that, skies? That's wintertime here in south central Ohio. <laughs> you don't get a whole lot of daylight hours to charge your batteries and things. And, you know, we've got the entire weekend is going to be looking like this. So, I would have to be running the generator all weekend. That's just facts of life. I am going to move the solar panels back here in this clearing. And I've got 10 solar panels, 250 each, 250 watts each, that I'm going to grid tie into the, I'm going to have a grid tied inverter. So I send a bunch of electricity back to the co-op, and they will give me credit for that. So I should have a really cheap electric bill. That's what we're planning. Now, I mentioned it down there, I was using a single pole 30 amp breaker to come here to the cabin. With this 10-2 wire, all I had to do was plug the hot into the breaker, the neutral and the ground go on the bus bar. Because this is like a an extension cord, I don't have to treat my service panel in there like a sub panel. Because like I said, I'm just plugging in an extension cord. When I run the 100 amp line all the way back to the barn, that's coming out of that box 
to a sub panel that's going to be wired differently much bigger wire you'll see it as i do it uh next weekend i have a trencher reserved don't even don't even try to explain to what, me why a walk behind trencher to rent for a day is 315 dollars but that's what they charge but we'll do us a 300 foot or so trench from that service panel across here, up the driveway, all the way down to the barn. So I can put electric in the barn. But that's next week's project. The reason I said earlier I'm going to have two 30 amp breakers in there is I am going to build a uh, pedestal, a 38 pedestal here with power so that when my friends want to bring their RVs or their campers up here, they can plug into shore power. I'll have a 30 amp receptacle on a pedestal sitting out here where they can get power. I might do a 50 amp because a lot of RVs have 50 amps. Um, I'll do a 50 amp pedestal there that'll have 50 and 30 and 120 <laughs> so friends that want to come and camp in their campers or whatever there you go you'll be able to plug in for shore power but yeah that's the the major upgrade i've been working on here at the no longer off the grid cabin we are on the grid i am loving it and i am non-apologetic for it I love the idea of solar, but it's a good idea. I Running this electric was a whole lot cheaper than what it would cost for all the solar panels and all the batteries and all that stuff to power my house I'm going to build. And to power the barn and to power the cabin. So, you know, there it is. Anyway, it's Friday night. I got to go to the store. I can't believe how dark it is and next week it's you know we set the clocks back it's gonna be worse it's gonna be four o'clock looking like this uh but yeah we are live now with electricity and it works everything inside you know i got it all hooked up i uh shot video of me carefully turning on the main breaker no smoke turning on the 30 amp breaker no smoke or sparks. I came down here. I plugged it all in. No smoke. No sparks. Wire wasn't getting warm. You know. So I went inside. The modem's on. All the cameras are up and running. So yeah, it works out perfectly. Now I'm going grocery shopping. Cause I, or not just grocery shopping, but I need a two burner hot plate. I don't have to use that butane stove and you know stove top anymore i got my keurig in there the gail bought me i'm getting a toaster uh vacuum cleaner just you know now i'm gonna set up house because now i can run all that stuff that i couldn't run on the solar so there you go folks i'll be live streaming tomorrow night saturday night i'm gonna do a live stream from out here again and bring everybody up to date but this is Joe out here at St. Bernard Acres. I'm out.